Maggie to the rescue. Hey everybody, Maggie's here with a little antique bisque doll house doll. She's little, she's about five and a half inches tall. Thank you, Maggie, you can have a seat. And she has a bisque head, bisque arms, bisque legs, and a little cloth body, a little red cloth body. And on the back, she's marked with a patent number. And I think she was either made in Germany or Japan. She needs a lot of help today. I'm going to probably do a little repaint on her eyes, on her lips, give her rosy cheeks, do a little repaint on her hair, her bows, and her feet, her shoes. And I'm going to wash her clothes and her bisque. And I just have to thank my good friend and her boyfriend for sending her to me, along with some other dolls that I'm going to do some restorations on. It was a wonderful birthday gift, and I'm excited to get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is wipe down her bisque with some baby wipes. So I'm trying to avoid getting any water on her fabric because that can create a kind of stain, a sort of backwash stain. Her hands are very crude. That just means, you know, they're not made in any kind of fine way. I don't know if you can see that there's little indications of the fingers. It's already getting a lot better. I'm going to go ahead and get started on her face a little bit to see what we have. I'm going to get a new one. I love her molded hair and molded bows. I'm just kind of pushing the wet wipe into the crevices. It's hard for me to tell what might be dirt and what might have been the original color that's worn off. There's a lot of crude bits right in here that I think are original to her making. Can see a little bit of the sawdust that's coming out there and I like this sort of patina on her I don't really want it to come off entirely again I think that actually might even be paint not dirt Sometimes this um, little bits like this, it's not even necessarily paint. I'm sorry, dirt. Sometimes when they were fired, they just got little black spots in them, and I think that's what this might be. Again, these kind of five and dime dolls were made out of a pretty crude kind of bisque. So a lot of them have these kinds of bumps and blemishes. And one thing I do, if it's not going to really change the color of the bisque, um, I will use an electric or actually battery operated nail file. And this file is actually really smooth. It's not rough at all. So 
I use it really gently. So I'm going to see, does this fit in here? Yeah, I'm going to try just a little bit. Again, I just do it really, really gently and without really putting a lot of pressure and just see that if, if I can file down a little bit of that. So I got out this little doll from my collection and she has single stroke eyebrows. And as you can see, she has the little line on the top. So I'm gonna try to do that for this doll. I think her eyebrows, adding eyebrows is gonna make a big difference. And let me see. Do you see how she has some blue underneath the pupils? I might repaint the eyes completely, I'm not sure yet, or I might put blue around them, then a little bit of black back on top. And I think I'm gonna complete the bow of her mouth more. I think that'll be really sweet as well. So first I'm gonna draw her eyebrows on as a guide. And I like these dollar store pencils because you take the lead out and then you push it and then a sharper leg lead comes out. Otherwise, just try to sharpen your pencil the best that you can. I'm gonna have to do this looking through the camera, so it's very difficult. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to look under the camera. Okay. So I'm going to want it bigger, wider, about here. I just got yesterday the thinnest brush that I could find is the woman that I bought it from. She called it a lash brush because it's practically like using one eyelash. So I'm going to do this with the paint and this and then this. But I really want a little bit more blue of her eyes, so I'm going to start with that first. go with that. So as her eyes dry, before I put her pupils in, I'm going to move on to her lips. This is so hard to do looking through the camera. I'm going to try it. bit too much water. I'm going to 
to close the mouth even though it's sort of an open mouth because it just it's gonna look cuter I think that's pretty good. Maybe it's a little bright. So I'm not going to paint this on thickly. I'm actually adding water. I'm almost using it more like it's a stain. And I'll probably even use my paper towel to take some of the color off. I'm going to paint her shoes so I'm gonna put a little paper towel under her shoes because I'm gonna have to do the front and back that could get messy so this is already a gloss um, paint but I might add a little bit of gloss medium as well I'm gonna see what it's like seems pretty glossy Okay, I'm going to let these dry. Adding a little bit of ochre to them. Yeah, I like that better. I redid her eyebrows and I do like them better. They look a little bit closer to being single stroke instead of laboring over them, although they look a little labored. So her shoes have turned out really nicely and I want to paint her bows now. And this is a more ultramarine blue, so I've got some ultramarine. But I am going to mix it a little bit with the blue that I used before. I'm going to just add a little touch of black just to give it a little bit more of an antique blue. Let's see. That's pretty close. I'm going to go with it. I'm treating this in the same way that I did her hair. I don't necessarily want it to be just like a solid painted 
look. I really want it to look like it's has some wear and has fallen into those sort of crevices. starting to get there. I think I want to bring her eyes down, her pupils down a little further. This one, the pupils are just this tiny little thing. I don't really like that. I'm going to do it off camera. So I repainted her eyes a little bit and gave her side glancing eyes. I think they're really cute. I love side glancing eyes. It was kind of an accident, but I really like it. So I'm ready to give her her blush cheeks. And I have a few lipsticks out that I'm going to look at. And this is a nice brand um, that just the color was just too intense for me. So it is now for the dolls, but these are just dollar store brands, so it doesn't really matter what you use. It's really just about the color. And I'm just going to apply it with some cotton swabs. And it's impermanent. Actually, everything that I've done is. Um, so that's something to keep in mind for this particular restoration. But this is, you know, for your own personal penny dolls or little dollhouse dolls or even the cute little flapper dolls. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but they have like really big heads and wavy hair and sometimes they do have the um, molded bows and they're adorable and they're good for this too but you know just for your own collection to brighten things up so I think I might in a little bit add a little color to her hair a little bit more reddish brown maybe even some gloss medium because I really want it to be a little bit more like this so I might wipe this down a little bit and then add a little color. But for now I'm going to do her cheeks. So I'm just adding the color first and then I'm going to use the other end of the cotton swab to just gently rub it in. On this side of her cheek she has um, some little flaws that the color might get caught in. Let's see if it does. She is coming alive less ghost-like. And so I'm going to use a little bit of this just to warm up her bisque here. It's just a little subtle color. And now I'm going to refresh her hair. I actually already like that better. Just looks more antique than like they are when you find them. So I'm just going to add a little gloss medium to the brown down there. I'm going to pick this up and put it here so you can see it. It's very messy, sorry about that. Okay. All right, so I don't know if you can tell how sort of transparent this is, but that's what I was going for. I'm just going to try a little bit on the back. What do you think? Again, this is just to freshen up your own dolls and have a lovely little antique doll for your dollhouse. Or I always love putting a little doll in the lap of a bigger doll. That's so sweet.
I do like that better. So I'm going to repair this little arm, but I realize this fabric is way too delicate for me to put a needle and thread through. Can you see that it's actually dangling off? So I'm going to try to repair it with some glue. I think that's the best way to go because it will sort of add a layer of stiffness and protection. And then I'm going to pull this up and glue that just a little higher up and then it'll be more even. All right. I'm just going to put some glue on the inside right here. Let's see if I've got... Okay, so now I'm just going to glue it up here, and I am going to do that off camera because I want that to go well, and I don't want to take a chance that I can't see well enough to do it right. And then she has a little bit of leakage here, and I'm going to put some glue there to stop that leak. Now I'm just using my toothpick to push under her shoulder plate to make sure the glue sort of stays there. I think it's turned out quite well still can be floppy like the other side. So her dress is pink. By washing it I got all that brown out <laughs> and it's a cute soft shade of pink and I am gonna use this with her so I have a whole box full of silk ribbons and I have a real pretty blue silk ribbon that I am going to use for this I believe and then the other thing is at an estate sale once I found lace gold I found this beautiful pile of probably French lace and I think I'm going to use just a little bit of that lace here and here so that when her arms poke out you don't really see the muslin so I'm going to probably do that off camera and just add a little bit of lace here and here and I'll get her blue ribbon ready. So I added on the lace. I think that looks real sweet. And I think I'm going to add this under her skirt. This actually had was like part of a hat or something. It wasn't even a skirt but um, I would when I found it I was like this will be perfect for a little doll slip one day so I'm gonna put thread through it and put that on her for her sort of petticoat slip Here's some of this silk ribbon that I collect, and it's almost always embroidery ribbon. Sometimes it's silk satin, but these are embroidery ribbons of different widths. And they just add like a, you know, they sort of take everything up a notch because it's silk. So I love using them for dolls. And I'm going to probably do a couple of more little things to her, and then I'm going to choose a ribbon for her dress and get her set up for the big reveal. What a sweetheart. She really came out so sweetly. And I added her pantaloons, and I added this little bouquet of flowers and her silk ribbon. And I also ended up glazing her bows just a tad, her eyebrows and her lips, just to make them last a little bit longer. So let's take a look at her before. Oh my goodness. And here she is after. Thanks again to my friends for sending her to me. That was a real special gift. Be sure to like and subscribe to see more restorations and show and tells and fashion shows to come. Thanks for your support, everybody. Bye. Like and subscribe. Thank you.